Okay, so for question 12, we have a common emitter or emitter unbypassed amplifier, right? And on part A, we have to draw the small signal circuit using the T model, then compute the small signal parameters. Then we derive expressions and calculate the values of Ri, R out, and the overall voltage K, and then find out the output voltage uh, V out when the input Vs is equal to sine omega T uh, volts, okay? So uh, remember that for part A, for a small signal model, we have to short circuit the DC voltage sources and then the capacitors, they become a, a short circuit, right? So let me just, so it becomes a short circuit here and there. And then if we substitute the BJT by its small signal T model, the circuit that we end up is, so for part A, is the voltage source here. Then we have RS, RI, then, sorry, R1 and R2. RS. And then we connect to the base here. So it's just the base, then the emitter, and here's the emitter side. Then we have the emitter resistance grounded, right? So this is the small signal emitter. Then we have the current source here, which is alpha IE. Then C, remember that IE is here. This is the collector, so we have RC. And then we also have RL. And I want to um, remember that we are supposed to ignore the early voltage. So the R out, the small signal output resistance is equals to infinite. So it's just like an open circuit that we don't actually see here in this, uh, in, in, in the drawing, okay? So this is the small signal um, circuit that we have. Now for part B, we need to define the values of R, E, G, M, right? So we can calculate, so for part B, we can calculate G, M, which we know actually from the problem that is one milli ampere per volt. We also know that beta is equals to 80, right? So we can calculate alpha which is beta divided by beta plus one. In this case is 0 0.98765, right? We can then calculate IC as GM times VT, which is equals to 25 micro amperes, right? We can then calculate the emitter small signal resistance, which is alpha over GM, that's equals to 987.65 ohms. Okay, now for part C, we have to find out an equation for RI and for the input resistance, the output resistance, and the overall voltage gain. So let's start with the input resistance. Okay, so one thing here is that instead of analyzing the circuit as it is because we want to determine this input resistance right so if we look at the the circuit as it is right now then basically when we could start with r1 in parallel with r2 but then we couldn't use re plus re in parallel with that because we have at this node here this alpha ie connected right so one way to get rid of that you is using the resistance transformation rule or resistance reflection rule where we reflect the re and so the small signal re here and in series with r the capital re uh, we reflect that to the base terminal and then basically this node here it becomes connected to the ground now and then yes we have R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with that resistance reflected, okay? 
So how do we, how that translate to the input resistance? So first we have our one in parallel with R2. Okay, that's fine. But we also have that in parallel with RE in series with RE reflected to the base. And that means that we have RE plus RE. So small signal RE plus the capital RE times so to reflect that RE plus RE to the base, we have to multiply by beta plus one. So this is the input resistance. And if we calculate this using the values that were given by the problem, we get 10.17 kilo ohms. Now for the output resistance, if we go back in the circuit here, is the resistance seen from this terminal here, right? So because we don't have the output resistance, it is just RC, right? So it's approximately RC. So the output resistance is approximately RC. And in this case, it's given by the problem. So it's one kilo ohm, okay? Now for the, um, for the overall voltage gain, we can calculate the AV1 again as, so we know that it would be the voltage at this node here, right? Or if we if we have like the input resistance, it would be like, because here it's not the correct uh, uh, circuit, but we would have like the, would have something like this. So let me draw it here. So we have the S, we have our S, then here we would have uh, the input uh, impedance right, that goes directly to the ground. So this is Ri, and this would be our Vi, okay? So AV1, which is Vi over, um, so let me just double check this. It is Vi over Vs, right, would be equals to our input divided by our input plus source resistance. And this would give us something around 0 0.9104 volt per volt. Now the second AV2, which is V out over VI, that's equals to minus alpha times the parallel between the load resistance and the collector resistance divided by the small signal uh, emitter resistance plus the emitter resistance. And then if we calculate this, we get minus 0 0.2213 volt per volt. So the overall voltage gain, which is AV1 times AV2, that would be equals to minus 0 0.2149 volt per volt, okay? Now for part E, if we use this overall voltage gain to calculate V out, that would be just Vs times AV, which in our case would invert the signal and gives us something that it's minus 1.007 sine omega t volts, okay? So that's it for the 